In this video, I'll be catching you up on the changes from Reaper 6.25 up to Reaper 6.27. If you missed any of the update videos, there will be a link to a playlist in the description. All right, starting off with Reaper 6.25, there's only one noticeable change here that I want to highlight here. Appearance option to hide edit cursor highlight on last selected track. In the Reaper 6.24 update, they changed the edit cursor to have this new uh, square bracket cursor. So when you're copying and pasting things, no matter where you are in the timeline, you can know which track it's going to paste to. So the first selected track is always going to have the square bracket along with the edit cursor. And so in 6.25, they made that optional. If we go into preferences and search for highlight, we've got this option here, highlight edit cursor over last selected track. You can uncheck that and close preferences. And now we're back to the older style of edit cursor where it's just the solid line um, across every track. And you have to follow the tracks on the left to see where things are going to be pasted to. Moving on to Reaper 6.26, for the category of razor edits, action to crossfade items at time selection acts on razor edits if they exist. There's a new action to move nearest razor edit edge to edit cursor a mouse modifier to remove area from razor edit selection, and the mouse modifier to split items at razor edit edges selects the media items and removes the edit area. All right, so let's start this off with crossfading items at time selection if razor edits exist. So let's bring in some audio. So I'm just going to split this item, create a razor edit over that, if I search for crossfade time, I'll find crossfade items within time selection. If I run this, they are using the razor edit edges uh, instead of just time selection edges. So this action works on either time selections or with razor edit selections. So if we had an item in time selection, this action would run basically the same, crossfade within the time selection. But of course, the difference with razor edits is we can have multiple razor edit areas. So I'm just going to duplicate these items. I'll make a razor edit area around this area and another one here. And I'll run this action. And now I can crossfade both of those items uh, at the same time. All right, so now we're going to look at action to move nearest razor edit edge to edit cursor. So, so the edit cursor is right here at bar number 10. I'm going to put a razor edit over here. And so this is independent of where my edit cursor is. Let's find that action, move nearest edge. Move nearest area edge to edit cursor, let's run that. And so it moved the right edge of that razor edit over to the edit cursor. I'll just clear my razor edit selection, make a new one over here. My edit cursor is still at bar 10. I run that, the left edge of that razor edit moved over. And for the next one, it says add mouse modifiers to remove area from razor edit selection. Now I do forget what this will actually looked like before. If I look in mouse modifiers today, I've got option to remove one area and shift option to remove areas. So let's try both of those. So uh, option key to remove one area with a left click and Shift option to remove all razor edit areas. So to remove a razor edit area, you could click outside of a razor edit, but that moves your edit cursor. If you want to keep your edit cursor where it was and remove an, a razor edit, you can option shift or alt shift on Windows and click on your razor edit and that will clear all of them. Or if you just want to remove one, let's say track lane or, et, or envelope lane, it's just a option click to remove that. Mouse modifier to split items at razor edit edges, selects media items and removes the razor edit area. Right, so if we're using this razor edit action, uh, which was a shift click, previous to the 626 update, this would keep your razor edit visible and your items would be split. Now this is much more intuitive and ready to use. 
you can uh, instantly just move these items, manipulate them, copy, cut, paste, things like that, um, without having to first remove your razor edit area. Moving on to glue actions with Reaper 626. Actions glue within razor edit areas if they exist. The default glue action splits items and glues only within time selection if all selected items intersect the time selection. And the former default glue action is renamed expanding to time selection if any. Custom actions and scripts are unaffected. Let's look up these glue actions in the action list. And so there's a bunch of glue actions here. It's a little hard to tell which ones are new and which ones are old. So let's try these out on these two items. I can make a, well, like it said, I can make a razor edit. So running the default glue action that will use the razor edit area. So in this case, it filled the entire razor edit area. If I run this action, glue items expanding to time selection, if any. In this case, it has the same effect. If I have a time selection and some items selected and I run this action, glue items ignoring time selection, it does this where it's uh, only glued between the items and this first area is unselected. I should also mention that uh, glue items within time selection has been added to the item context menu. Recently, Dan Worrell put out a video about the 1175 compressor, which is one of the built-in JSFX plugins included with Reaper. And there's various bugs with that that he found. And so in the 626 update, they fixed those bugs. They added a few different modes that would get you the old behavior. Plus, they updated several others. There's an output polarity setting for the light on nonlinear plugin. Auto expand soft knee has been fixed. 1176 compressor and various others. Over compression fix a deprecated blown capacitor mode to preserve old behavior and some sample rate conversion gain correction for the guitar amp model and guitar amp model dual. So I'll just show you that briefly. I'll just grab the 1175. So the under the ratio control, you see these blown capacitor modes, which have the old and bad behavior that was shown in Dan's video. This is one of those like 12 year old bugs that no one really stopped to look at until Dan's video. For the video processor, there is a very small change. Make the presets list consistent with other effects types with user presets first. So if we just go to the effects list, uh, instead of the user presets being at the bottom, now the built-in presets are at the bottom. My own presets are at the top. Moving on to some Mac specific things. For Mac OS Big Sur, they added um, a function to make audio input support in security and privacy actually work correctly. So when you go to install Reaper and you try to record um, the, the flag for uh, using the microphone actually shows up here in security and privacy and it's easier to set this up. This is mainly a change that uh, between the Intel and the ARM64 versions. Uh, the ARM64 version up to 6.26 wasn't showing up in security and privacy. So you would have to in install the Intel version just to get into this security page but now it just works. There was a Mac specific full screen change. Uh, we're actually gonna come back to that later in 6.27 because it was changed again. For the region marker manager, they added support for exporting take markers, but not importing. So yeah, if you go to view menu, region marker manager, right click in here, you can go to export regions and markers. And so if you have any take markers in this list, regions and markers, they will all be exported in that uh, CSV file. And one last thing, if you have a bunch of razor edit areas and you want to render those, you can use those instead of regions. So go to the render window, source, razor edit areas, and razor edit areas via master, two new options in the render window. Moving on to the changes in 6.27, let's start off with the full screen mode for macOS. Add preference general advanced option for window full screen button to activate full screen rather than OS full screen. So there's two different ways to do full screen. Let's look in the preferences and go to advanced UI system tweaks. This option here, main window full screen button activates Reaper native full screen. So if you enable this, this may be a little hard to actually notice. I've got the, the window resized a little bit, so it's smaller than my full screen. And if I hit the 
full screen button. It instantly jumps up to full screen. The dock hides. And if I hover my mouse over, there's no window management buttons there anymore. To come out of full screen, you have to go to the view menu and uncheck full screen or press command F11. The other mode is more like what um, other programs use. So if I go to a finder window and go to full screen, it opens up into a new space or like a, a separate desktop. And if I hover over, there's this uh, window management uh, where I can come out of full screen uh, and close the window or just come out of full screen. So that's the change that happened in 626. Uh, it's this Reaper only mode of full screen uh, where you have to use the keyboard shortcut or go to the menu to come out of full screen. So if we uncheck that main window full screen button activates Reaper, we hit OK, OK, enter full screen. It opens this into a new uh, space or desktop. And if I hover over the main menu, the window management buttons come up. So we can come out of full screen. There are a few other options in advanced UI system tweaks that are new. Preference general advanced option for rounded buttons and Big Sur list view margins. These buttons here, rounded macOS buttons, use larger list view margins on Big Sur. Having this second option, I didn't really notice the difference, but these rounded macOS buttons are fairly obvious. So I have them enabled now. And let's, uh, I'll just show you like with re-EQ, you see these rounded corners in the, in the buttons and the menus and things like that. So I am going to switch that off. Uncheck rounded Mac OS buttons. OK and OK. And if I close and reopen this window, you'll see that there's the, the more like Windows style rectangular buttons and, and everything in any of the plugin windows and various other places within Reaper. The Reaper preferences window, square edges instead of rounded. Not a huge change, but I think if you're on Mac, it does make more sense to use the rounded option. Reaper 627 has various changes to channel mapping and the plugin pin windows and things like that. Changelog says effects, improve pin connector window, add IO menu item in effects pin connector dialog to increase host channel count to match plugin, and add option in pin connector dialog IO menu to pass through or zero out unused output channels. So that changelog uh, entry is quite a mouthful. But basically, this window here, when you click on the two in, two out button on a plugin, brings up the plugin pin connector. This has a, a small visual change. And um, under the IO button here, there's a couple new menu items set host to two audio channels, pass through unmapped output channels, or zero out unmapped output channels. So, pass through means that if you're not using uh, channels three and four from this plugin, um, channels three and four will still pass through, go around this plugin essentially. But if we choose zero out, uh, those outputs that are unused will be also be muted. Set host to two audio channels. Let's say we have recomp in here. This is a four in, two out plugin. In this instance, I have the option to set host to four audio channels. And so when I do that, that gives this whole track four channels to work with. If I go to routing window, Parent channels, one to four, track channels, four. So the default would be two and one and two. For most users, this doesn't make a big difference. If you're only using four channels for side chaining, things like that, this doesn't really make any difference. Most users won't need to worry about this stuff, but it, it is useful for the you know very specific times when you need it, where this stuff wasn't really possible before or was a little more convoluted. For JSFX, they've added the Channel Mapper Down Mixer plugin. Let's have a look at that. If you search the JS folder for Channel Mix or Map, uh, you'll find this plugin. And so this is a basic routing tool for within the plugin chain. This looks very similar again to, to that plugin window, but this is kind of uh, more advanced. We have these toggles for pass through output or zero out. Let's uncheck these and play this out, you still hear it. If I go to zero out and play it, no audio gets passed through the plugin this way. Why is that important? 
let's say that we only want the left channel output to go through. And you know we've muted one side. If this has multiple outputs and we're using um, the same input, so let's say uh, inputs one are going to one and two and three and four, let's get rid of that, and five and six. So we're just duplicating the left and right signals on multiple outputs. When we're down mixing, we have options for um, managing the gain. So if we are sending the same signal to multiple outputs, you know, that would increase the volume. So we have the option of lowering the inputs by 3 dB, by 6 dB, or setting up our own custom mix. So that brings up little faders here, and we can trim down to infinity, but practically, you know, we're, we're trimming down to about 32 dB. Can we text entry? No. We can't enter an exact number here, but, you know, this, this gives us some flexibility uh, in our custom mix. We can also hit reset and we can hit clear to delete all of the, uh, the matrix connections here. I'm gonna remove that and move on to the next thing, which is channel mapping per item. And this is pretty cool. Add action to set channel mapping for selected media items. So that's the one we're going to look at here. So there is an, an action. I've assigned this to alt I. And that brings up this window. And once we make a change in here, it's actually going to load that plugin as take effects. So I want this item to send, um, let's get rid of outputs three and four and, and clone outputs one and two. And I'll just uncheck five and six. So now we've got this effects on the item. If there were effects on this item already, that would put this at the end of the effects chain but if you move it into the first slot, then these changes affect the plugins. So for an example of that, let's put in a recomp um, because this has stereo meters, zero out output two. If I play this, on the meter, you only see the left channel moving. So if we go to pass through, both the left and the right are going through, and we haven't really changed any of the routing at all. Again, this is something that doesn't affect most people. Most people using Reaper aren't going to be using this, but anyone that's working with uh, surround sound formats, ambisonic, binaural audio, possibly surround especially, this is stuff that's going to be very useful for them. Uh, another application for this is when you're recording multi-channel from like a field recorder, and you've got stereo and multiple different uh, mics coming out, and you kind of want some options for mixing or routing or rerouting things. So let's say you want mic number three to come out on output number five. Um, you could just change output three to five and five to three, and that's how you would do it. So, so whatever channel that was coming out of this item on channel three, it would now be coming out of channel number five. And that's that's an easy way to remap things. There's two different standards for surround and different DAWs, different applications use different things. So Reaper uses the SEMTI format, which is left, right, center, left surround, right surround, and LFV for the six channels. And the film version is left, center, right, left channel, right surround, and LFV. So if we have something in the film format and we play it out, we would have the, the first channel or our left speaker playing the left channel and our right speaker would be playing the center channel, just usually just the dialogue. And it'd just be all messed up. We can convert that to the SEMTI mode by changing two and three. So we just swap two and three and it would look like this. Channel three would be going to output two. Channel two would be going to output three, and then four, five, and six as normal. So now you can do this all within individual items or within the track using the plugin. You don't need to use sends for this anymore. You don't need to break this out into individual tracks. You can use this plugin to remap things, and I think this is going to be a lot easier, especially if you're working in surround. The change log also says that you can use a command click or a control click on PC to exclusively set that channel. 
And so that means that if I want input one to exclusively go to uh, output four, I can command click here and that will slide that, that block down in the matrix or that pin or whatever you want to call it um, down to there rather than uh, clicking once and then unclicking the other one. Just a little shortcut, command click will exclusively route that. And the last thing on the list for today is the track manager display track channel count which means that there's a channel count column in the track manager. So we can see if a track has two channels, six channels, et cetera. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you're now caught up on the last three Reaper updates. If you missed any of the previous ones, there's a link in the description to the full playlist going all the way back to Reaper 5.0. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.